Okay, so this is Excel part two for chapter one, and we're going to be looking at um, two ways of calculating tax. We'll look at the old way of calculating corporate tax and then the new uh, way. So in the old way, we had uh, multiple tax brackets and multiple tax rate for, for corporations. So anybody earning money between these two brackets would pay 10%. Any money they earned over 9,525, they pay a 12%. And if they if the corporation made more than $38,700, they paid 22%, all the way up to 37%. So at 37%, any money over 500,000 it is paying 37%. So that's where the tax brackets would end for a corporate. So if a company made 150,000 in earnings before tax, we would want to calculate the tax rate. So for the first amount, we would calculate, we could say, the ending tax bracket minus the beginning tax bracket. So this is the amount they would pay and we would multiply that over. So they would pay $953 in the first 9,000. So for the second tax bracket, we'd have to start with at, at the top amount minus the beginning amount. So you see here, there's a to and a from, I'll just center these. So it starts out, we kind of start out at 9,525 and go up to 38,700. So this is the amount that would be in the second tax bracket. Again, we just multiply the two. So for the third tax bracket, again, we, we're gonna, we're gonna since 150,000 is greater than 82, we're gonna start at 82 and minus the beginning point. So this is the amount of money that would be in that third tax bracket. Then we'd pay 22% on that. So now the in the fourth tax bracket, we see that since our income is 150 here, this is what we're going to start because this tax bracket goes beyond 150. So for this last one, we'll start at 150 and then minus the beginning point. So this would be the remaining tax. So calculate, calculate the last tax bracket. We just take the remaining amount times, okay. So this would get us 60. So if we look at the if you highlight over these first four here, if I move this up, you'll see down here the sum is 150, and then the average is 37,500. And there's four account of four items. So that's just a quick way to get a total. So I wanna make sure that whatever amount, I'm, I'm basically breaking up this 150 into four different buckets at four different tax rates. Now to get the total tax, I'm just gonna define the sum so I'm going to do equals here, sum, and then highlight these four amounts. And I get the sum of all the taxes this company paid. So they get the marginal rate. The marginal rate would be whatever the last tax bracket they touched would be the, what they call the marginal rate. So we have the total taxes, the total tax dollars. The marginal rate is the last tax bracket the, that they were, they were in. And then the average rate would be um, simply just taking the total taxes paid and dividing it by the total uh, income before taxes or earnings before taxes. So the average rate here would be 21.19%. So when someone says, what is your marginal tax bracket? You know, if they say, what is your tax bracket? You have, should ask, is, are you talking about marginal or average? So average is probably more reflective of what you're actually paying. Marginal is the last tax bracket you actually paid money into. Okay, now so this is the older corporate tax system and then the 2017 Tax and Jobs Act that was passed made corporate taxes a flat rate of 21%. So now all income at the corporate is at 21%. So if you take the 150 here, let's see actually just, let's make that 150 there. If you take the 150, multiply it by the 21%, this would be the taxes. So this would be the total taxes. Now the marginal rate would be 21% because that's the only that's the only tax bracket. And, and the average, of course, if we take the total divided by, we're gonna get that 21%. Okay, so here's a look at the uh, previous old corporate taxing rate system and the new cor corporate tax rate system. So in the text, 
they're going to talk about um, the current tax is going to talk about the old corporate tax rate system. It's still a good example. Uh, and hopefully a new tax will move over to the current taxing system for corporations, which makes it a lot, you can see a lot simpler. Okay, now moving on to tax uh, deductions. Here in problem one, we're going to look at if a company has earnings before interest and tax, uh, less expense, what would be their change in earnings after tax? So the first thing we do is we're going to update this tax bracket here to be 21%. So that's the new tax rate. So I might as well just update that for all the problems. So we have three examples here. So going back to example one, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what, what if they have taken a loan out, so they have with debt at 30000 uh, without debt. So what are the two differences as far as the change in taxes if a company has some interest expense based on debt they've taken? Okay, so we see the earnings before tax. We would take the EBIT, which is earnings before interest and, interest and tax, and we'd minus the tax. Now we're going to do, multiply it by the 21% uh, rate. So what I'm going to do here is say equals and I'm going to put cell B5 and I'm going to multiply that by a rate of 21%. So you get uh, 35,700. So the earnings after tax would be our earnings minus our taxes. So our earnings after tax um, would be 135. Now they go on the side, what if they have no debt? So then if we're gonna simply, our earnings before tax, we're just bringing our EBIT down because there is no interest. Uh, so I would take again, D5 times 0.21% our tax rate, and we get 42,000. And if I take our income minus our tax, we get 158. So what is the net change after taxes? We're simply going to subtract without debt from debt, and we see that there's a, a $23,700 change in earnings after taxes for problem one. Now, if I continue this through problem two, uh, I'm going to do the same exact thing. We're going to take the EBIT minus the interest expense to get a new earnings before tax, and then I'm going to take the new earnings and multiply it by 0.21 to get the new taxes and then the earnings after tax would simply be subtracting the two so 158 here and then if they have no debt I would just bring down the earnings multiply it by 21% again. So subtract. And we get 197. So the difference here would go like that. 39,000. And for the last problem, and you should, I would say, pause this video, try this last problem, then come back and see. I'll walk you through it. Okay, so if you pause it, you come back, let's see if your answers match mine. And if I take the earnings before tax minus the interest, I will get my new earnings before tax. And if I take this and multiply it by 0.21, and then if I take this minus the taxes, I get my new earnings after tax. Here, it's simply going to be the 400,000. If I take the 400,000, This is a weird where it doesn't let me select the cell here. I have to kind of do that. I think it's just because of the size I have. Okay, so if I take my earnings before tax and I want to subtract my taxes, and you can see here the difference between. So what's interesting, if you look at the difference between tax 
if you take debt and don't have debt, you have, of course, you have more earnings, and the difference is um, 23. Now, why it should really, you might think, well, if the difference is the extra interest here, shouldn't it be 30,000? But no, because this lowers your taxable income, it's gonna lower your taxes. So this tax reduction here, they're getting a tax reduction of 6,300 because interest is tax deductible, and that's why their change in earnings after tax is only 23,000, not 30,000, because you get some of that interest um, expense back in the form of a tax deduction. Okay, so that's the quick video for the Excel. That's part two of chapter one. I hope you found this useful. Thank you, take care.